It's a brand I didn't know yet, but its remarkable design makes it stand out from the crowd of Chinese art to art converters. I have never been in China and don't know the Chinese hi-fi culture, but from a distance there are two things that I noticed. There is a strong preference for r 2 r DACs and for pointy feet. Lave did include both, but unlike many Chinese DACs, the design of both the DAC and the box it came in shows strong marketing. And that makes us curious. Before taking a closer look at the Harmony DAC, Let's first see where it is to be used. The Harmony DAC of course needs a digital source. That could be a computer, but as you probably know I'm not a fan of connecting the computer directly to the DAC or another hi-fi equipment for that matter. I rather use a network bridge that is connected to the DAC over either USB, SPDIF or I2S depending on the bridge and the DAC. Alternatively, you could use a network player or digital transport. The bridge is then connected to your network over a network cable or Wi-Fi. This gives it access to the internet and your computer and or NAS. On your computer or NAS, a music server program has to be installed. Think of a DNA server, UPnP AV server, Logitech Media Server, Orivana, Amara, J River Media Center. Rune or the like. The analog side of the DAC is connected to an amplifier that drives a pair of speakers or headphones. The music server program is usually controlled by smartphone or tablet, sometimes also a computer. If you still want to use a CD player that can be connected to over SPDIF or TOSLINK. While a TV, DVD player, Blu-ray player or game console can be connected over TOSLINK. The source is then selected on the DAC using the input selector or remote control. The Harmony DAC comes in two colors, silver and black. The housing is machined from billet of aluminium to have separate compartments for power supply, digital electronics and analog electronics. It measures 255 by 250 by 50 mm. Measured with the spikes and spike shoes, the height is 75 mm. It weighs 3.5 kilos. On the baffled side we see the power button that doubles as a screen dimmer. The full color OLED screen normally shows the sampling rate when in non oversampling mode and both the input and output sampling rate in oversampling mode. When a CD player is connected that output CD track info over SPDIF track ID and playing time can be displayed. When in menu mode it, of course, shows the menus. These are activated by this button. The rotary encoder on the right corner lets you select inputs and menu choices by turning and pressing. The full aluminium remote control comes in the color of the DAC, can control two devices selectable with this switch and has, next to the obvious buttons, also programmable buttons. These can for instance be programmed to select oversampling or non oversampling, the upsampling filter and the polarity for absolute phase. On the back we see the IC mains inlet combined with the fuse holder. Next to it a bridge clamp to have the chassis lifted from the ground. Then the digital inputs, USB audio class 2, Toslink optical. SPDIF coaxial and I2S on an HDMI connector. The analog outputs are available as balanced on XLR and single ended on RCA. On the inside the three compartments are clearly visible. They separate the high voltage transformer, low voltage power supplies for digital and analog, the digital circuits themselves and the audio electronics. The voltage selector lets you set for 230 and 150 volts AC. The toroidal transformer is shielded using mu metal and uses separate windings for digital and analog circuits. The matching power supplies are on separate circuit boards. This one for the digital electronics 
and this one for the analog electronics. On the digital board there is a CMOS differential line driver for the I2S input and an AKM chip for the AES3 inputs, a Texas Instruments USB2 repeater that provides isolation, a microprocessor for system control and an FPGA for the audio processing. Two Crystec crystal oscillators are placed here quite a distance from the DAC circuits. Digital electronics and analog electronics are on separate circuit boards that are connected over this fancy looking bridge. But when I unscrewed the fancy looking cover, a small circuit board with many pins stick in the connectors of both boards. As far as I could see there was no galvanic separation. The actual ladder converters are in these gold colored modules. The output stages are LM732 op amps, each powered from an international rectifier MOSFET voltage regulator. Using the Harmony DAC is usually straightforward. Connect your digital source, like a network bridge, streamer, CD player and so on, to the corresponding input on the DAC and connect the DAC to the wall plug using the supplied power cable. Then press the power button and wait until the unit has boot up. Select the correct input by turning the wheel on the right side of the front until it shows up in the display and confirm by pressing the wheel. Only when using the I2S input you might have to select the right pin out configuration, although the Harmony DAC will try to choose the right settings automatically. Connecting it to a Magna Mano Ultra MK3 Farad music streamer went flawlessly, meaning that the deck works perfectly with the PS Audio pinout, which is the one I came across the most with HDMI over I2S. When using I2S you can select whether the clock signal of the source or the internal clock of the Harmony DAC is used. You do that in the I2S menu. Other menus are non oversampling or oversampling, polarity often called phase or absolute phase, the function of the two function buttons on the remote, either can be set to switch between oversampling or non oversampling, polarity or I2S pinout configurations. For the display there are settings for brightness, automatic dimming and switching off time or switch off completely. The Harmony DAC has no volume control. You have to set the volume on the amplifier. Then about spikes. I'm not a big fan of spikes. I'm convinced they offer no contribution to the sound quality and potentially can ruin your furniture. Live supplies three spike shoes and a template in which you can place the shoes, then place the tag on top of them and remove the template by pulling it forwards to you. If you have to change cables from time to time, a elaborate solution. I used three stack audio EQ system isolators number one instead. One placed towards the front and two aft. So the mirror image of the pointy feet. I've been quite busy getting the best sound from the Harmony DAC. I started off with this setup. The Harmony DAC was connected to the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier over Grim Audio SQM cable. It drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio over 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robin Hood Zero loudspeaker cable. As source I used the Magna Mano Ultra MK3 Farad streamer running Rupi XL connected to the Harmony DAC using I2S over a 4K HMI cable and to the Zissel switch over a network acoustics Eno system. I then replaced the Mano with the optical regen that was still in the house from its review. The optical regen has a USB audio class 2 output. That was connected to the Harmony DAC using a network acoustics Eno USB cable. The optical module was powered by a 5V DC iFi iPower 2 and the optical render was powered by an S Booster BOTW PMP Eco MK2 set to 6.5V DC. The third stage was switching back to the Mano but now with the clock source in the Harmony DAC set to I2S. 
now the clock of the Mano was used. During the listening test I compared non-oversampling and oversampling modes and I always preferred the non-oversampling mode. The oversampling mode had too much influence on the transients, for instance in the right hand of a piano piece. So the end evaluations were made in non-oversampling mode. In the first setting with the mano as source the sound was on the bright side with slight coloration in the mid range and mediocre sibilance control. I then connected the optical rendu setup but that didn't make much of a difference. So I decided to switch back to the mano over I squared S but now with the clocking in the harmony DAC set to I squared S, meaning the mano now clocked the DAC. That opened up the mid range, improved the sibilance reproduction and gave a better stereo image, focusing and black background. In this setting the sound quality came close to the Holo Audio Cyan 2. The Live Harmony DAC looks fantastic, has a great remote control and is packed as only high end products are. But although not bad, sound wise it doesn't live up to the raised expectations, nor the price of $2700. But then again it will not be the first piece of equipment that is chosen for the looks. If you want this DAC, make sure you use it with a source that can output I squared S on HDMI that has a very good clock while the DAC is set to external clocking over I squared S. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. There will be a new video next week so subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram to stay informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumbs up or link to this video on the social media, it is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>